Well, I was in college uh, during the Korean War, which was the next conflict after World War II. <coughs> And, but I, and I graduated in 52. I went in the Air Force because I wanted to, uh, or I went into the military service, which happened, it happened that I went into the Air Force because at that time it was very difficult for women to get a job in a supervisory position. And I wanted to manage and supervise. And I had worked for a, a, a large company. As a matter of fact, it was the DuPont Company at an atomic energy plant. And I could see that there was just no opportunity for women uh, in, this, uh, in this very male-oriented company. And so I received a letter from a recruiter saying that I could get a direct commission as a lieutenant in uh, the Army, as a matter of fact. And I talked to several people and concluded that I, I should find out if the Air Force had a similar program, which it did, and so I... Uh, checked and and was uh, and entered the Air Force as a second lieutenant in 1957, which was uh, then about five years after the Korean or four years after the Korean conflict, and in fact uh, there was still quite a large number of of people still left in the service who had been taken in during the Korean conflict, and so there was a big downsizing during the uh, the my first two or three years in the Air Force. And I was assigned to the, to the comptroller field and worked in cost analysis, management analysis, data automation, and that was long before computers as we know them today. And it was in the days of punch card equipment and uh, tabulating machines and the like of that. And uh, I was stationed in Spain in, uh, from 1959 to 1963, and that was one of the most wonderful experiences of my life. I was one of about six women at the base uh, where I, or six military women, the base where I was uh, stationed. And it was quite a novelty to the Spanish because needless to say, they didn't at that time have any women in their armed forces. And so uh, they were just fascinated that, that I could be a lieutenant in the Air Force. And that uh, gave me several opportunities to do things that I probably never would have had another opportunity. Uh, one of the, the interesting things that I got to do because I, through a, one of the Spanish uh, fellows that worked at the base whose uncle was the commandant of the uh, uh, Spanish academy equivalent to our uh, uh, military academies, uh, what, uh, he, he was the commandant when the, king, the present king of Spain was going through the academy. And so I got to go to his graduation, and that was one of the most interesting things I've ever seen because uh, they had the different uh, military services because they had one academy for uh, the Army, uh, Navy, and the Air Force. So they'd have the members of the class that were being commissioned walk, march by uh, the commissioning authority, and uh, the king or the then prince uh, led Prince Carlos led the group. So he marched by in the army, and he was commissioned a lieutenant in the army. And the next came the navy, and he led the navy, and he was commissioned an ensign in the navy. <laughs> and then, then the air force went by, and he was commissioned an, a lieutenant in the air force. <laughs> And by that time, uh, I can still remember seeing him because his neck and, and, the, and the, around his ears and his face was becoming a little red from embarrassment, I think. <laughs> but that's the only person I ever saw that was commissioned in three services in the same day. <laughs> so I came back from uh, Spain, and uh, the, the next highlight of my service career was being able to deploy with our, with our bomb wing in support of the B-52 bombing of Vietnam. We deployed to Guam. And I, I was the first woman ever to deploy with a Strategic Air Command uh, bomb on an operational mission. And I flew over on a KC-135 tanker filled with other people being assigned there to work and, and equipment that we were taking over to use. And we, I was there for six months uh, during our, our six-month deployment. And came back and went to the University of Alabama uh, 
and if any of you are football fans, that was during the time of the great uh, coach, Bear Bryant, and I did not go to a single football game <laughs> because it was too complicated. And, uh, and so then, uh, you know, at that time, you filled out a form in the Air Force, and I don't know whether, Nicole, whether you get to do that anymore or not, but you said where you would like to go. And so I put down no preference. So I got sent to Vietnam. And I was there for a year, uh, it's stationed in, in Saigon at the headquarters, the Military Assistance Command. And to show you how few of us were able to do some of these things, there were only three uh, women officers assigned to headquarters MACV. One, uh, one arm, two army and, and myself in the Air Force, and that was it. And I lived downtown, we went back and forth in a bus. Uh, I was about uh, three blocks back uh, of the presidential palace and about a block and a half the, from the central market where the Viet Cong occasionally set off uh, rockets. Uh, that was a frequent target. Uh, but it only happened a couple of times while I was there. And that was a very interesting thing to be in the, the capital of a country that was under siege and filled with refugees. And I can still remember a, a young boy, about nine years old, uh, who had no idea what had happened to his parents. And at night, he slept in the Jeep of uh, some of the Army people that parked their Jeep by the building, that the hotel that I was staying in. And then about a half block from our hotel, living on the sidewalk, was a little family uh, with a couple of children. They had next to nothing. They slept on cardboard. Uh, fortunately, it was warm all year round there, so they didn't, uh, the heat was not a problem. Uh, uh, heating was not a problem. Keeping cool sometimes was a problem. But uh, I watched, uh, and during the year that I was there, they, the mother had a child living there on the street. And I often think of these people and wonder what has ever happened to them through the years. So then I came back, uh, was stationed for a while in Dayton, Ohio, and then came and spent 10 years here in the Washington area, four and a half years at the Pentagon and four and a half years at uh, Andrews Air Force Base, and then I went to my final assignment as a commander. Uh, I think that being in the service was one of the smartest things I ever did. But as I look over uh, what I have been able to do it with my life and in my career, unquestionably, uh, the most important thing to me will always be that I had an opportunity to lead the effort to build a memorial honoring all the women who've ever served in the military or who serve today or who will serve in the years to come. I was fortunate enough to uh, meet uh, many of the women during my career, and in fact, they influenced my career, women who served in World War II. And from my standpoint, you know, I was working f to build a memorial to honor these women, uh, although the memorial uh, honors all of them. And uh, if you haven't had an opportunity to visit the Women's Memorial at the main gate at Arlington National Cemetery, I hope you'll do that, because we... Uh, there's a lesson in history there, and we pay tribute to the accomplishments uh, and commitment and dedication of the women who served in the military. Mm -hmm.